Hey everybody, we are live at five. I'm Paul Wontorek. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. How are you doing, Ryan? I'm doing well. How are yeah, you? We had our Christmas party yesterday. That's why there was we no did. live at five. Yes. So sorry. I'm sure you missed us. We were us. celebrating. This yeah. we were just discussing this area was a bar. Mm-hmm. People was a were good, drinking yeah. cocktails right here <laughs> yeah, yesterday. That's right, mingling. We should have a, live stream. We should have a live stream of our cocktail party. Uh, yeah. Brandon Hagenson is here. Yes. Of the Off Broadway Smash Afterglow, mm-hmm. like this show has really turned into yes, like, people around the office love like a it. real big like yeah. word of mouth little yeah. Off Broadway Smash. I love I love things like that. Me too. Uh, but we have a lot of news to we talk do. about first. Yeah. So what's what's up? It's awards season. It is awards season. Not for Broadway. Not but for Broadway, but for film and TV. And so the SAG Awards came out. Uh, the SAG Award nominations came out this morning, and a lot of theater people involved. I don't have to go through them all, but Laurie Metcalf, recent Tony winner for A Doll's House. Part two, and coming back with three tall women, she got nominated for Lady Bird. She's going to be nominated for every award. She's this going to season, like, right? yeah, yeah, she's going to sweep these nominations. Yes, okay. Denzel Washington, who will soon re- soon return to Broadway in The Iceman Cometh, got nominated for his movie Roman J. Israel Esquire, which I oh, haven't seen. He did. Yeah, isn't that like yeah. a shaft? Like it's like a seventies like. I think so. It's yeah. by the guy that did that movie Nightcrawler, which I really liked with Jake oh, Gyllenhaal. It's right. his new movie. Okay. Um, but other people in here, Judy Dench, <laughs> Francis McDormand for Three Billboards, Jeffrey Rush, Jessica Lange, Lily Tomlin, Allison Janney for I, Tanya, Jeff Daniels, David Harbour from Stranger Things, Elizabeth Moss, Laura Linney, Sean Hayes, and Jane Fonda, amongst many, many others. Kristen Bell, who has that new show Encore, where she brings back those musical people from high school, will be hosting the 24th Annual Screen Actors Guild Awards on January 21st on TNT and TBS. Cool. Yeah. So sometimes in the morning meeting, we have a morning meeting, and we go, and Andy Lefkowitz goes through all the news items, and today mm-hmm. he said something, and we all kind of gasped. We gasped. We were very excited. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And the news was that Death Becomes Her, I've been dreaming of this, this. that Death Becomes Her might become a stage musical. <laughs> yes. Starring Kristen Chenoweth. What? The, the, someone like, reached into amazing. our dreams. <laughs> Death <laughs> Becomes Her is like the greatest movie ever. It's so good. Uh, so good. What, it's about two women. It's about who, two women who are lifelong tr- rivals. Yes. Yeah. And they fi- one of them finds out about a, a process where you can become immortal. Right. And she's like, well, this will get her. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. And then they, and then they end up. <laughs> and anyway. Just, it's it, ridiculous it, it, and it, amazing. Just get the movie. Like, honestly. Yeah. It's uh, Goldie Hawn. Uh, Goldie Hawn, Bruce Willis. Yes. And Meryl, and Meryl Streep. Street. And it also includes the famous um, musical version of Sweet Bird of You. Yes. Songbird, yeah, abs- right? Absolutely. Starts with that. Anyway, oh, so, uh, so apparently uh, Chenoweth may play Madeline Ashton, the role created by Meryl Streep and also the star of Songbird. Um, and the film will be written by Martin Donovan and David Co-op? Cope. I think Cope. 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 Yeah. Cope. Okay. Uh, and directed by Robert. Oh, Robert oh, oh the Zemeckis. movie was. Yeah, Robert yeah. Zemeckis. That's what I was yeah. going to say. This is not the musical. We don't know the We creator. don't know who's writing the musical yet. No. But hopefully somebody that writes good songs. Yeah. Because this is like a great plot. This Although there's, be amazing. they're going to do some crazy special effects. Yeah. We were discussing I mean, this. Yeah. There's some, there's some a, things that happen in that movie. Yeah. That, but yeah. so good. Anyway, so this wait. is exciting. So everyone just. Yeah. Please write it's, it go, and go watch Death, Death Becomes Her if you haven't seen yes, it. Yes, go get it. It's a good. It's a good holiday rental. It is. Why not? Yeah. No. Of course. Put you in the mood. Um, Michael Luaye, who uh, we knew he was going to be joining the Broadway production of Hamilton, and now we have his date. He will step into the title role on January sixteenth, twenty eighteen. Javier Munoz will play his final performance on January fourteenth. Luaye was an understudy on Broadway. He's been leading the uh, the show's touring cast, uh, but now he's going into into the Great White Way production. I hear, I hear he's fantastic. He is, uh, yes. Yeah, People I mean, I haven't seen him, him do it, but, yeah. but that's exciting. Yeah, so, cool. great. Remember how we talked about there was supposed to be that Crazy For You revival? Uh, yes, after Susan the Susan Stroman was going to do it, and they were they were going to do it in L.A., mm-hmm. and they bring it to Broadway, and then it got canceled for L.A., so we were all like, well, that's over. <laughs> But it's not. <laughs> no. There's a developmental workshop happening in January, uh, and Stroman will be doing it. And we don't know much more about it, but of course, it, it's all started from a concert that happened last year with Laura Osnes and Tony Yazbek, who are both perfect for the roles. They are perfect. Uh, so yeah. they might be involved. We don't really know, but Crazy for You may still be still be chugging back. along, chugging along, still still going. All those Gershwin songs. There's always a Gershwin <laughs> musical, so <laughs> exactly. you, you can't. You can only have those songs legally off Broadway for a certain amount of time. <laughs> they have to return. <laughs> Um, A Christmas Story Live is happening this weekend, this Sunday, on Fox. And we found out today that B.B. Rexa uh, will be performing an original song opening up the show. Ryan, who's B.B. Rexa? B.B. Rexa. 
Um, I'm not familiar with her whole canon of work, but she did write the song Monster, which was a huge hit for Eminem like a monster and Rihanna. Hit. A it was monster a monster-sized hit. hit for those two Billboard artists. Um, so she's going to be opening up the, the show with this new song called Count on Christmas, which was written by Pasek and Paul specifically for this live event. Um, and that's happening at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this Sunday on Fox. So, so you, you know, we all knew that um, Andrew Lloyd Webber is writing a memoir yeah, un- called Unmasked. <laughs> yeah, because what yeah. else would you call it? I mean, it was yeah. that name. Uh, it had to be. Uh, yeah. And it comes out March 6th. And for some reason, we don't have a copy of it yet, even though I we know. do know Imogen, know. Lloyd Webber. Imogen, can we get us a copy of your <laughs> I'd love to read. dad's book? We're readers. Anyway, I'm dying to read it. Uh, and there will be a special event on March 5th the day before, and Glenn Close will be uh, hosting like an interview. Yeah. She'll be asking him questions, and it's at Town Hall, isn't it? Yes. It's at yep. Town Hall. So, And then you, March 6th is also, it's his birthday, right? It's his 70th birthday. It's coinciding with and that. And who else's birthday is that? On March 6th? Yeah. I don't know. Well, if it's Andrew Weber's birthday, it's, it's Stephen Sondheim's <laughs> birthday. That's, right. <laughs> That's yes. a very famous, uh, anyway, anyway, very famous fun fact. Also on the site, I interviewed uh, Philippa Sue of The Parisian Woman on Show People. And we have a great feature with so the stars of beautiful. The Wolves. Caitlin just, McNaney did a, we did a big gorgeous. photo shoot with the very talented uh, girls, ladies of The Wolves. And last night, the children opened. We, we weren't able to, we were here again, like we were We were partying, here at the bar. So, <laughs> right here. But, but we have photos but of, the, of the bar, of us yeah. at the bar. <laughs> no, of the children opening. No, there's, there's Instagram I'm sure there, there are, but there yeah. There are actually, I'm going to be posting some photos <laughs> shortly. <laughs> uh, anyway, we'll be right back with Brandon Hagenson of Afterglow. These artists will come together for only one thing it's not a concert. It's not an award show. It's SpongeBob the Musical on Broadway. Go ahead, throw your rocks at me. Baking a pie is easy, if you know how. I'm still standing. If only life were as easy as pie. Waitress is a hit, raised the New York Times, with songs by Grammy-nominated artist Sarah Bareilles, an uplifting celebration of love and laughter. Sugar butter flower. Ben Brantley of the New York Times calls the Book of Mormon the best musical of this century. This was my fourth time seeing it, and they still had me at Hello, winner of nine Tony Awards, including Best Musical. The Book of Mormon on Broadway. You got to get up For Carol King, finding the top of the charts was easy. Finding her own voice was beautiful. Beautiful, the Carol King musical. Hi, we are back on Live at Five, and I'm joined by Brandon Hagenson. How are you doing? Hey, I'm Good well, to thank see you. you. Thank you thank so much. Thank you for much. coming in. Thanks for having me. Uh, Off Broadway's Afterglow. Yes. Which yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sure, th- how long have you now been in this show? We've been running since June, middle of June. So right. we're hitting the six month mark now. Which is crazy. Yeah. Because I'm sure yeah, when yeah. you signed up, you didn't think this is a no, six month yeah. job. I mean, what, I mean, was it like a, I mean, it's a very small show. Yeah, we've uh, always had a limited run. Uh, right. Our original closing date was August 5th. And okay. so to now be looking at like going over the new year and beyond is crazy. It's Merry really Christmas. Cool. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 Uh, um, so yeah, we just have kept extending, keep going on. Um, uh, yeah. We originally were supposed to close August 5th and now we're looking at March 14th. It's really cool. Wow. It's really that, cool. That, that's yeah. incredible. And yeah. I love that. I love when a, when a show gets an audience and yeah. it's sort of like an unknown, a new playwright, yeah. a, little new, show a that new could, cast. Yeah. It's all new, new, fresh blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's um, S. Asher Gelman's um, essentially his first play mm-hmm. here. Um, and uh, it's a really, really cool script. Um, 
Uh, it's a three-person show. And so let's it's dig really in. Really intimate. Yeah, let's, let's, dig just, in. let's, let's just talk just, about it. Let's just go there. Let's um, get in it. So, <laughs> so you play a guy named Josh. Yes, I'm Josh. I'm a yes. theater director, and I've been with my husband for about five years. What and kind of we decide. Do, you direct? <laughs> do we know what kind of shows you direct? Well, he's directing um, a production of Midsummer Night's Dream uh -huh. mm -hmm. during the show. Okay. And. Um, uh, at Rise, um, they, uh, they're in bed with someone that they've opened their relationship up to. How um, does the show open exactly? The I love show, I'm so glad you asked. Say at Rise at before. Rise. <laughs> at Rise. Uh, curtain up. Well, um, at Rise, really, we're waiting on the bed while the audience comes in. There's a sheet around the bed, and yeah. that's, um, that's how the set starts. Is, uh, it goes to blackout, and the sheet comes down and lights up. And we're in bed together and have just had a threesome. And so the show you're all kind of, we are, yeah. You're the show naked. features a lot of nudity. Right. Um, but uh, it's a, the show is really about that intimacy right after you have sex. Mm -hmm. It's all, the nudity is all post coital, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like the three of us are in bed together. And as each person goes to take a shower, I'm left with the boyfriend character. And of course, that post sex chat is, cute and like puppy dogish and flirtatious and then he goes to take a shower my husband comes in and it's like help me with the sheets you know what i mean right. so it's kind of like those two right. different right. things that are happening <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. yeah yeah so okay so you're a couple you're mm -hmm. in a sort of okay relationship and then you decide <laughs> like let's see what else is out there no we love each other no we're in a great relationship but um yeah, it's sort of the, the seven year itch kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, five years in mm -hmm. gay world, but you know, it's uh, let's try to open up the relationship. Let's see what else is out there, spice things up. And my husband and I do have a fight where we talk about, well, you know, here's the amount of sex that I need from you and here's what I'm willing to give you. And so it's sort of why we open our relationship up. And there's a bunch of reasons to do that. But, um, and then it's about all the things that happen that whole knife edge of love and friendship mm -hmm. and friends with mm -hmm. benefits and money comes in the picture at one point. So it's like all of those things. And Midsummer yeah. Night's Dream. And who? And Midsummer Night's, 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 Night's Dream. Yeah, yeah figuring out that in the there, totally. Uh, so, what, <laughs> so why do you think people are connecting with it? I mean, it sounds like the kind of conversations yeah. that couples either are having everywhere or should be having. Or you know what's funny is it's not just gay couples right now. A lot of straight people, a lot of women, a lot of straight men are coming to the show and it's something that they're trying to um, look at too. Everyone's kind of redefining what a relationship is and mm -hmm. um, I've just heard a lot of conversations recently about married couples that are trying to open their relationship up. And for some reason, it's a little less taboo in the gay world. Right. So it's sort of an easier story to share like to start the play, the stasis of the play is, oh yeah, we opened our relationship up. And you sort of take mm -hmm. that for granted. But a lot of people are thinking about doing that. And so I think we're one of the only plays that are really like cracking that open. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are trying to do it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, and uh, the nudity element, you know, Naked mm -hmm. Boy yeah. singing has run off yes. like bachelorette parties for right. years. Right, 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 right. So yeah. I mean, women love, li women love that too. <laughs> but it's not about yeah. that. It's really sort of, it's what it sounds like is uh, it's sort of like, here we are, we're naked, right. we got that over with. Yeah, exactly, you take, the nudity, you take the nudity for granted, right. immediately, because we're just naked, and aesthetically it's shocking, and sometimes you have to rope, I, I can feel we have to like get the audience back into the story uh -huh. a little bit, Right. but I mean, very quickly, you sort of just forget that they're three naked people, and I mean, we do put our clothes on eventually, and then the story starts being told, and you get wrapped up in these characters, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, what's it like for you being in the run for this long? Uh -huh. Has it been interesting? Has it grown over time? What, yeah. what, what's, the, what's it been like for you? Yeah, I mean, you have to make it about something different all the time. The longer I do it, the more, uh, the more there is to crack open, the mm -hmm. more there is in the show. Um, I mean, there's, there's a money element. There's like, why did we open our relationship up? What kind of sex am I having with my husband and with my boyfriend? And you know, I've never been married, so being on the inside of a marriage mm -hmm. every night, like fighting with my husband every night, it changes every night, uh -huh. and like maybe that's how a marriage is. It's kind of cool, because we've been fighting for months now, so <laughs> eight times a week. You know what I mean, it's kind of cool, yeah. Yeah, so it changes constantly, yeah. So where are you from? I'm from Illinois. Oh, I'm okay. from a little town called Oswego, like an hour west of Chicago. Okay. Yeah. So how long have you been in New York? I've been in New York eight years, Okay. on and off. Okay. 
uh-huh. doing that math in my head and checking it, I double checking, I carry mean, the don't one. Don't look at me. I, I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't know the answer. That's why I asked the question. <laughs> yeah, where's my producer's note card? But uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I grew up in Illinois. Again, like super rural. Like mm-hmm. we, I had to tassel the corn when I was 13. I was a Boy Scout. It's one of those things. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I went to uh, Milliken University, which is in okay. Southern Illinois. And then um, moved here, yeah, about eight years ago and have been uh, working a lot in musical theater. Um, and so this is one of my first plays that I've done in the city. But um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm really proud to be part of it. So it's fair to ask you like what your um, like Broadway musical dream role is. That's a fair question. <sighs> yes, it is person. a fair question. Well, because people always ask, and somebody <laughs> did ask. Alec asked yeah, about yeah. your dream Broadway role, and I turned into a musical role. Let's talk about your musical stuff. My dream musical role is Bobby in Crazy for You. Really? I lo- yeah, I love Crazy Sus- for Susan You. Susan yeah. Stroman's working yeah. on <laughs> Susan Stroman's working oh, on she- that. But no, listen, Crazy for You is my senior show, and I was Bella though because mm. I didn't tap at the time. Okay. Yeah. Oh, but you're not, yeah, not yeah, you've yeah. been working on it yep, to exactly, build up to this moment. Exactly. Yeah. You've, been, <laughs> you've been building up to the to the Stroman uh, revival. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that workshop is just starting. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. Could um, yeah. Afterglow become a musical? I would like to say yes. We think all the time about what kind of sh- numbers would be an afterglow. <laughs> the music in Afterglow is really cool. We have all these scene transitions and uh-huh. they're all like they're all just like this ethereal like techno music and a couple of them are my, my favorites and I would love to put lyrics to some and throw in a jazz hand and you know do those <laughs> Afterglow the musical sequel, yeah. Throw yeah. in a jazz hand. <laughs> so after the show are people I wonder when you do something like this, what I know is connecting with people. Do people want to talk afterwards or do they just more sort of like they don't want to talk because they because it's so like it hit home. You know what I mean? It hits so close to home that they're just oh, kind of like, no, 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 no. Like I've had friends they, that come. Or do they come and just like pour everything out to you and like, oh, my God. This is it's a little bit of both. Uh-huh. But I've definitely had like friends of mine come yeah. that are couples that have left afterwards. Yeah. yeah. And it's it really hits close to home for a lot of people. Huh. And um, there's definitely a lot to talk about. There's a lot to like open up about. I mean, anything where you have to like ask yourself the big question, why am I in this relationship? What, why are we married? What do you give to me? Mm. What do I need from you? Mm -hmm. And if I can't get that from you, am I allowed to get that somewhere else? Those are big questions, you know what I mean? It is interesting how in the gay world it is more acceptable to sort of do all of that. I think that's because just by the very nature of coming out, we Mm -hmm. all had to like, you know, go within ourselves and redef- and define sexuality for ourselves. Right. You know what I mean? And then so we're a little more willing to do that just right off the bat um, with being married. Uh, so how has the show, has the show changed you at all doing it? Has it sort of made you, I don't know, do you think you're like a different guy? Mm-hmm. Like when you're digging into something like that every night? I don't know. It seems like. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've always had um, pretty open views about what a mm-hmm. relationship could be like right. as far as uh, like monogamy is not always king but um, I guess no I'll get back to you on that <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I don't know we'll ask you in April yeah. or <laughs> yeah, next yeah, summer or whatever I with my stage husband for a few more months yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and so is uh, has the cast been the same the whole time um, no, 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 no. Um, uh, right now, Patrick Riley and Joe Chisholm are uh-huh. doing the show uh, uh-huh. with me. And um, Robbie Simpson uh, left the show um, last month. And um, so Joe Chisholm's been my husband since then. And Patrick Riley has been the character of my boyfriend for the entire run. Right. And then our swing is Taylor Wright, who's right. awesome. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's a really amazing cast. It's, I mean, it's a sm- it, I come to work with only six other people. There's four actors and two stage managers and a stagehand. And it's just like, it's like the best seven people that you could work with. It's really, yeah, cool. I'm really happy to be with them. So yeah. is it nice to not have to sing and to be just Oh, sort of yeah, not to have to bust your ass dancing. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, the show is really challenging. It does take it out of you. It's, um, it's a 90-minute one act, mm-hmm. which like, God bless a 90-minute one act. But um, so, yeah, but I mean, you just go through this whole journey of essentially me meeting my boyfriend and everything being flowers and happiness with my husband and then going through this whole journey and ending with a question mark of how did we get here? Doing that for 90 minutes, sometimes twice a day, is 
is a lot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's cool. a really cool journey to go on. Yeah. Yeah. It's freezing out today. It is so cold. <laughs> That's why I want to it's know cold. that. It's so cold. Yeah. I actually, I just came from a matinee of Farinelli and the King. Mm-hmm. And they keep the theater freezing. Mark Rylance Why? must um, <laughs> Mark Rylance must let the theater cold. Uh, I'm assuming that he's the, the Davenport Theater, where Afterglow is playing, yes. is not that cold. No, it's not. It's an old building, so we have those pipes, you know, like mm-hmm. every apartment building, right. especially in old they neighborhoods. Bang. They like, <laughs> yeah. they bang. So, um, so it's nice and warm. However, there is a shower on stage. Oh. And we... It's like Splash. I, it's sometimes, splash they tell me it's supposed to have a shower on stage. Oh, really? You never, yeah, you know, yeah, you're too young. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they used to have a bar. They used to have a bar. But uh, no, I didn't shower in that bar. But um, <laughs> in Afterglow, we have a shower, and it's it's just an old building, so the pipes have to warm up, and so that's that's like the biggest acting I have to do in the show is to <laughs> act like the water is warm. <laughs> to act but comfortable. Because I mean, let's be real, the show was built for the summer, and now we're running into the winter, and it's <laughs> right. like we didn't really think about that. <laughs> but uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, the theater is warm though. It's fine. <laughs> so be, if you're cold now, it's okay. It wasn't supposed to be a hit. It wasn't supposed to run into the window. It wasn't. It wasn't. But well, here we are. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Maybe we'll decorate the theater for Christmas. We'll see. <laughs> what? Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. So after. Glo- okay. So listen. So I have to back up. So we did a nude audience performance. Oh yes. A right. couple weeks ago. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so sometimes there's nudist, nudist theater parties. Right. Right. There's right. A right. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a thing. Um, apparently, we didn't know, but so we did. <laughs> we did a nude audience show, and then it's sort of. It was supposed no, to be no, like stop, a stop pause. There's questions about this. <laughs> oh, so, there were questions all week, and I, yeah. So yeah, yeah. the nude audience, mm-hmm. they come from the street with clothes on. They do. And they take their there clothes are trash off in the bags. Little I have lobby. a picture of this. They have trash bags over their seat. There was a coat check, and then oh, they sat on a they, trash bag. And then, no, 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 because they, well, I mean, yes, but they have bags for their clothes to go in. Okay. That so they goes did that under the their seat. chair, and then everyone has a towel. Are you like peeking out watching on. everybody no, like no, 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 no. undress in the theater? No, 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 I couldn't if I wanted to, but no. But no, um, where were the trash bags <laughs> kept? <laughs> under the chair. Okay. So wait, this is the thing that you're stuck on. So yeah, the tr- the clothes are in trash bags under the chair. They sat naked on the they seat. They sat naked on the seat. On the towel on the seat. Thank you. That's the detail yes, I needed. Yeah, yeah. And then the other detail so is the seats were to the theater. afterwards. But um, <laughs> but yeah. So, the, so we had. So they were all naked. And you, yeah. When you, while you're doing the show, you can see everybody's naked. Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay. And um, uh, it standing was really up? interesting. It Did was no, 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 no. It was not a standing up. Okay. Um, I think people would be self conscious because the audience looks at each other. They're on either side of us. Oh right, it's right. Six people and on each right, side, yeah, right. yeah. So they're looking at each other, right. but um, uh, but yeah, it was for the build up to it, for all the publicity we got going up to it, it was a very uneventful yet lovely show. Yeah, it was like the most attentive, they just happened to be chill naked. audience, and they just happened to be naked, right? Yeah, it was right. great. It was really, actually kind of cool. That. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, we got a shout out on Weekend Update, that was really neat. And That's unexpected. really cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Uh, so everybody, so you don't have to be naked to go see it. People, you do not. In fact, and it is people, actually preferred if you don't. Yeah, it's, it's the rule. Make, actually, let's be very clear. You have to make special <laughs> arrangements <laughs> to do that. Yeah, you, you have to go back in time to two Sundays ago, and so you can't <laughs> yeah, do you that, can't just like. BYO trash bag and then <laughs> take your clothes off for the show. That's not. I'm never gonna live down the trash bag. Yeah. I should have just said bag. That was this interview just fell apart when I said <laughs> trash bag. It really did. Uh, it's but a good yeah. visual, actually. <laughs> uh, okay, so Afterglow is on 45th Street at the yes. Davenport. Right, it's right near Schmackeries. Yes. So Get your cookie. Appearing yeah, naked on stage, being right next to Schmackeries. Right. How do you resolve I these two had, issues? I've had about seven cookies the entire run. Wow. Yeah, I have to pick them wisely. That's impressive. I allow myself a couple a month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I recommend their eggnog cookie. Eggnog? Now that we're in that season. I didn't know that was a thing. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, so we're at the Davenport up on the third floor in their uh-huh. loft space, yep. which is a really cool black box um, yeah. that the designers have done amazing things with. And uh, yeah, we run through March 14th. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Brandon, yeah, for coming you, by. Thank you very much. Uh, everyone, check out Afterglow at the Davenport Theater. Wear your clothes, please. Uh, <laughs> this is Brandon Hagenson. Maybe you'll see him in Crazy for you or some Hello. big musical. What? <laughs> Maybe we'll see you do that next. Yeah. All right, cool. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much. Bye.